Hello everyone, my name is Squeakles and in this video I asked you guys to ask me some questions so I could do a little Q&A and I thought it would be fun um, given I've never done one of these things before and also because I'm just completely totally burnt out. Sorry, that's gonna keep happening um, while getting ready for Comic Con. So, I asked you guys for questions on YouTube, and I also asked you guys for questions on Instagram, and I will do my best to answer both of them. So, here we go. You guys had some really, really good questions. I'm going to probably have to do some uh, cross-editing, but I really don't think I have time. Okay. The first question is, how can I bounce back after several bad art pieces from Toon Coon? Um, the best thing you could do to bounce back from several bad art pieces is to keep going, actually. Um, sorry, he's yawning and I'm yawning. It's your fault. Um, basically, you can draw several things, but realistically, instead of trying to make every single piece of artwork something that is pristine or something that we have an idea of as sellable or perfect or what have you, more or less with each piece that you're making, you're just practicing to get better so technically any bad art pieces are good because then you can learn from them so instead of looking at your line of art pieces and saying these are just all bad art you can look at them and say okay so what happened here mm. This perspective is off, but I like the way I did this. So this is good. For everything that you don't like about it, I want you to find something you do and make notes so that when you progress onto your next piece, you can keep that in the back of your mind and make notes and say, all right, I like what I did here, but I don't like what I did here. Do I need to work on anatomy? Do I need to work on practicing my brush strokes? That way you can just sit down calmly and positively, go through your things and say, okay, this is what I didn't like, this is what I do like. And it's very important for you to put things that you do like and then keep going from there. Cause from there you're gonna say, okay, well, maybe I don't like my anatomy so good. Maybe I need to practice um, and look at more references or maybe I don't like my line art maybe I should practice my line art a little bit more and from there go on so on and so forth if you start getting burnt out sometimes it's best to just step away from it do something you find to be relaxing and fun and don't feel so bad but keep moving forward because even for me I feel like I have to make like 15 art pieces before I find one where I'm like, yeah, I'm happy with every single thing I've done with this piece. I've been making all of these con pieces and honestly, I don't think there's one that I'm just, I haven't picked apart and I'm like, this is not perfect and I can't believe I'm gonna try and sell this at con. But again, you have to be kind to yourself. On to the, remember, it's every piece you make, as long as you finish it, like Jake Parker said, finish not perfect. Our idea of perfect or good changes constantly. And we're just continuing, we're continuing to practice our craft. Next question. How do you break down the body of a dinosaur when drawing them? I would love to get into the dino art scene, but I'm struggling so bad. Um, this question's from Art by Lizzie. Well, Lizzie, um, I break down the anatomy of a dinosaur the same way I would break anything else down. Um, 
The first thing I would do is I would find where the skeleton is or, you know, the line of action. So let's say you don't have a figure, but you look up a picture and you find out, okay, so let's say I did have a picture. I could, I know where like his hip bone is going to be, his spine, his ribs, um, his head, his skull, um, and then the basic structures. And from that, you can kind of make your lines of action. From there, you can also, it's important to learn the muscular structure. Um, so you can break that down into further shapes. If you don't know the perfect muscular structure of a creature that no longer exists, again, if you have reference photos, then you can break it down. Very simply saying, okay, his body is an oval shape. This is a rounded triangle shape for his hip. This is another cylinder. This is a cylinder. And then each one of his toes are little cylinders. I break every single thing down into shapes very lightly um, to, to figure out where everything is gonna go. And then I add my details later. And that's how I handle everything, not just dinosaurs. Um, if you are really uh, adamant about doing dinosaurs exclusively, I suggest you pick up um, a dinosaur book. Not not a how to draw dinosaur book, but like an actual book um, about dinosaurs um, and their fossils. So you can look at their skeletal figures. It'll show you their bone structure. It'll show you um, other illustrations of what other artists think they can look like and then you can build from there and the more you practice the better you'll get of course next question is do i have any tips for persevering when you're just starting out a big project slash self-employment in beaver i tend to get nervous and overwhelmed lose interest and have a hard time finishing or going fully through stuff like that marty well, Marty, as you can see from this glimmering pile of works in progress to finished work and unfinished work, I too have that problem. E2, Brutus. Um, the best thing I can tell you is it's a phase. Everybody goes through it. And the only person who's gonna make you get out of bed in the morning and get stuff done is you. So we are our worst critic and we are our biggest enemy. So the best thing to do is to force yourself through those feelings. Um, again, sometimes your work might not be the best on those days. I suggest you try pushing through that if that doesn't work out, take a step back. Again, do something you love, something relaxing, and don't feel guilty about it. Um, sometimes going back to the basics and drawing simple things like just rough sketches or just things that don't matter, like taking a scrap piece of paper and just doodling like rough sketch ideas that you might get inspired and say, oh my gosh, I really like this idea. Let me see what goes through <laughs> Let me see what goes through it. Let me see if I can follow through with this. Um, but yeah, this big project, like getting ready for Comic-Con, I am so tired. And you'll find yourself, I have a fake art rules video. Um, I made all these fake rules for myself for this that all of my pieces had to be new. I had to redo old pieces. And then the closer and closer I get to the deadline, I'm like, wait a minute, I have pieces I can use. Why am I stressing? This is going to be plenty. And the last weekend where I'm giving myself to make pieces, I'm just like, this is it. These are the last two pieces I'm gonna make. I'm gonna color them and then I'm gonna scan them like my other stuff. I'm gonna make my prints and that's gonna be that and you just get, you'll get to a point where you're like, your stress, once it gets into you, where you have to take a point of self-reflection and be like, 
Okay, why am I feeling this way? Okay, I'm feeling this way because of this. Well, does this really make enough sense? Does, should I be preventing myself from succeeding because I'm making up this rule for just because? No, I'm creating an obstacle for myself. I hope that answers your question, Marty. Um, the next question we have is, any tips for coming up with unique poses? I always find that my pieces tend to be too stiff or redundant when it comes to posing. Your art looks always looks so dynamic and eye-catching. Any advice would be great for Makira. Well, thank you very much. I personally think that my stuff is too stiff and sometimes when I'm just sketching, like I wouldn't really worry about it. So um, Akira, my advice to you would be to, um, when, you're, when you have your idea in mind, just like I have here, for example, or like in my sketchbook, take some time or some space to while you're kind of fleshing out what you wanna do, make little tiny, just quick doodly thumbnails that aren't aren't really like fully developed don't put time into it just like kind of throw stuff around so you'll kind of get get like i'm gonna make a video about this actually one day called the bullshit drawing and i feel like which is basically a warm-up because i find that if you've ever sat down to draw and you've drawn and you've drawn your pieces first thing you draw you're like meh but you, you get like you're like yeah I'm in the mood now I'm gonna keep drawing and then that second thing you draw is like wow pristine and then the first thing you draw you're like did I really make both of these pieces so I feel like sometimes not all times this is just with me you have to get the bullshit drawing out of the way so if you get like draw out the bland stiff pose that first comes to your mind um, or sketch it out and then from there figure out the mood you're trying to convey or figure out like what are objects or things that you know coincide with the piece that you're making what's the emotion what's the energy a lot of times i'll get up and i'll take pictures of myself um if i feel some something is too stiff and i need to make it flowy i'll put exaggeration on the hair or exaggeration on like the movements or the body just remember the eyes are going to follow the lines and whatever you do so um take reference photos use yourself um just play around with fun poses there's plenty of places online since she's stock at deviantart.com there's a go to pinterest and there's plenty of things to do where you can even i find like photography poses are a bit stiff sometimes so even just take that and further push it so if like someone pose like this then further do it so like make your thing more so like curve the arm a little bit and curve this and make the hair flow around this so that the lines come and bring it right back to where the arms are and then the eyes follow the arms i hope that makes sense i hope it makes sense um but yeah so get the stiff drawing out first which is the drawing that first comes to mind. And I find once you relieve yourself of that, other things will come into place. Like we like, okay, so here's the first BS thing that I think of. And then I'm like, oh, well I can also do this, or I can try to do this. Just do little baby little sketches with, of action lines and things of what you want. And then, then build upon that. I hope that helps. Okay, next question is, do you have any tips on drawing animals? Also on fitting two characters in one space believably. I have a lot of problems with that. Um, this is from Gillian Vita. Well, Gillian, um, kind of like I just explained with the Triceratops, 
um, I break everything down into shapes. So when you're looking at anything, if you would like to draw anything, so take something simple like a Pokemon. He is all shapes, right? So he's a circle, his wings, like little cylinders, round ovals, 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 and then closing them off. And even people are shapes too. So like if you look at my hand, you can break these down into little ovals. You can break this down into a little oval. You know, this can be round and square. This is a section of meat that bends. So this could be an oval. This could be an oval. Oval, oval, oval. This is a cylinder. Points right here. Another cylinder. I break every single thing down to shapes. And the better way to do that is obviously, again, get yourself some reference so that you're not trying to pull it out of thin air and just practice doing that. So break things down into something simple um, that's easy on your eyes and plot it all out where you have something together. And then after that, then build upon the shapes you've built. So that way, once you have all your shapes laid out, then you can gently go over with your lines and be like, okay, this is where this is gonna be because I already know that I fit this in this space. And animals are easier than people because um, their shapes are just easier. They're, they're just way more simpler, I think, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Uh, one second, Kirby is crying. What is your favorite thing to draw? Animal, character, person, creature, food. From Rabbi Love. Rabbi, I'm going to assume you are a new subscriber because this is my jam right here. Unicorns. A little too much unicorns. Um, but they're like my go-to. They're kind of like my muse. I don't feel at all um, stressed or pressured when I draw them and they just make me happy. I also really like drawing monsters and creating characters off of them and unicorn centaurs. Gosh. I've had two coffees today, two coffees, and and now this, and I'm getting old, and I don't like it. Annalyn says, so I have a, I have been in a terrible art dip lately, and I don't really know what to do about it. Do you have any tips to get back into drawing regularly? Well, Annalyn, regularly is different for everybody. Um, a lot of people like to draw every day. A lot of people say you have to draw every day and that is incorrect. I know several professional artists and non-professional artists that go a long time with taking breaks. And frankly, I will be too because I'm burnt out. Um, and you know, there's nothing wrong with stepping aside and taking time. Um, but I assume when you say getting back to drawing regularly, maybe try and create a little uh, schedule for yourself or join in on a community challenge. That way um, there isn't anything like any pressure behind it. Um, maybe make a list of some things that you've always wanted to draw before you haven't had the chance 
um, and then just each day finding time to at least make a quick sketch or a doodle. It doesn't have to be anything intricate, but just work your way towards something. Sooner or later, you'll find some inspiration and say, you know what, I really want to elaborate on this piece. Maybe I can make this a little better or turn this doodle into something or a design and so on and so forth. Um, something that gets me pumped is I make some playlists. Um, I'll find a Netflix show that I don't need to watch to know what's going on and I throw that in the background. Um, I'll throw in some comedy, some game grumps, other things on in the background while I go. So you don't really have that feeling of like, I'm just sitting here. Um, make sure you take breaks regularly, but it needs to be something that makes you happy and you need to do things for you because your happiness is key. So again, um, your favorite things, make a list of things maybe you've always wanted to draw. Um, going back and finding old pieces that you've made, um, kind of like the draw this again challenge, but so I mean that for me always helps and it's a real you know, ego boost to just see how far you've come. And there's no, once again, there's no pressure or stress to that because you're just redrawing something that you made a very long time ago. It's already done, the idea's already there. All you can do is elaborate on it and make it even better um, and just roll with it and have fun. So maybe take, find some old pieces of when you were a kid or maybe just find some children's drawings. Um, or other people's characters and just go at it and have fun and just something simple. Just do something that's going to make them happy. Your favorite movies that you had as a kid, your favorite characters, uh, the list is endless. Just browse Tumblr, well, not Tumblr, Pinterest until you find something cool, draw something with your take on it. Do something that's going to make you happy. James Lee says, after I finish the piece, how can I keep it, how can I keep the paper in good condition and not scrunched up or torn for longer? Um, well, um, I do most of my work in a sketchbook for that reason. Um, but if you have like a growing pile of finished pieces like I do. I'm just going to get a 9 by 12 little portfolio. They're very fairly cheap. They're just like these little binders. You can get them on Amazon. Um, you can probably find them at Office Depot or Staples um, and then just put them, those in the little sleeves there so that that should protect them. Um, do a better job than me because I just stack all my stuff together and then put it in the stack stack and whatever happens happens. So but I suggest getting like a little portfolio for yourself um, and always keep things especially watercolors Copics out of the sun uh, that's gonna fade your colors and uh, keep it flat. If your piece if you've made something and it is warped um, you can put it, you know, in a safe packaging and then um, press it under some very heavy books for at least 24 to 48 hours and then that should flatten it back out again. Kind of like how we did with posters in middle school. Or I did anyways. Do you have trouble focusing on one thing? I feel like I'm interested in so many areas photo manipulation, traditional art of all mediums, photography, etc. If you do, how do you just focus on one? And if you don't, I'm happy for you. From Sea Like Art. I have trouble focusing on one thing. I get so many ideas and I have really high expectations for those ideas. So a lot of times I'll just sit at my desk and nothing will get done because I don't know what I want to do. Um, sometimes I don't feel like I'm ready to try and take on the challenge of doing something that I want to do. And then I'm just afraid that I'm not going to like it, which is utterly useless and is just preventing you from doing anything. 
So I've been trying to make it my goal to push myself and push through. And you might surprise yourself. I didn't think that I would be able to make this Gotham City Sirens piece. I'd never do uh, three characters in one thing. I'm pretty happy with this. And I think it turned out pretty nicely. I took my time. And I just, you know, focused on making the piece. And just, just that, just focusing on creating. And you never know. Um, it also helps to make lists, write everything down that you have an idea for and just tackle it one by one. You, you can't, you can't, you know, be trying to be like, okay, I'm gonna focus. I need to learn, do better at anatomy. I need to be better at liner and I need to be better at shading and I need to be better at all these things and I'm gonna focus on all of that at once in one piece. You can't do that, that's just too overwhelming. Kind of like earlier where I addressed making the list of the things that you liked about your pieces and the things that you didn't like and each time you make a new paint a new piece um picking something off of the list that you didn't like um and make focusing on that and keep working towards that and then once you get that out of your system work your way down to the next piece on the list so kind of in the same way um you know maybe one for one week you focus on trying this craft or one week you try to focus on this craft. I mean, there's so many things you can do. There's nothing to say you shouldn't. I wouldn't say to bounce around too much um, because then you're never gonna really be able to like give anything the proper chance it deserves. Um, I would pick the one you want to try um, the most first and do that for a little while. And then once you get comfortable like making things that you're happy with, obviously not at a pro level, that's not gonna happen overnight, then maybe try something else and you know what I mean, just for fun. Or maybe while you're taking a break from the one thing, you do something else. But always make sure that it's something fun for you and it's not work. I hope that how it answers your question. And then this is the last question. I'm not gonna get to the Instagram ones this time because I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, Gillian has another question, is what are your uh, tips for posting work online? Well, I would have had some very good tips for you um, before all these algorithms and YouTube things came into play. Now I'm just as much in the dark as everyone else. Uh, the best advice I can give you is to put yourself on as many platforms where people can see your work as possible. Because they're all different. Um, you never know who's going to see it, when they're going to see it, and what post is just going to be the post that skyrockets and someone notices you are your work so I implore you to get an identity that you're happy with um, and consistently make sure that you are posting um, I mean ideally if you really want to be serious about it the people I've seen where they've been the most successful post something at least once a day it's pretty hard um, and you don't have to but keep in mind that the longer your presence is left online the easier you are forgotten um, uh, but I would definitely check out obviously Instagram Twitter Tumblr Facebook YouTube art station uh, DeviantArt if you still think so but because the social media is so oversaturated now and the algorithms are basically put into place so that not as many people see our stuff so we want to pay them to promote our work so they see it that's what it is um you know you just i suggest you do research look at the artists and see what tags they're using to tag their pieces in um tag your pieces with things that 
other people would search for, not necessarily so, like, exactly what it is. Like, you know, off the post, you know, tag it as drawing or tag it as sketch. Because if you're on Instagram, you would probably, you know, pull up the kind of art that you're looking for. Say you drew Spider-Man, someone's probably gonna go looking for the Spider-Man tag or Marvel fan art or Marvel or comics. Um, what the brand that you use, uh, what you used. I mean, again, research um, what artists you like that are successful, see what they're tagging their stuff with, that's what I do. Um, and make sure that you engage your audience and that you try and promote positivity and helpfulness and just being another lovely member of the community. But um, thank you guys so much for your questions. I'm so sorry that I'm very tired and yawny and not as, not as vibrant as I usually am. Um, I'm just really tired from my pep for Comic-Con. Um, I have been vlogging things that happen as I've been making and creating things and as things have been coming in and I'm preparing. So I should have a video on like my preparations for con before that goes up. And then I'll probably vlog a little bit of Comic-Con too. So hopefully you guys should enjoy that. But again, thank you guys so much for being patient with me. Um, as I go through this really important time in preparing for Comic-Con. And I hope to have some cool videos out for you sometime in the near future. If you'd like to see another video like this, um, let me know down below. Um, if you have other questions for another answering your comments video, uh, tag your comment um, Kirby's Dreamland and ask the question there. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you like this video, you might want to, and the other videos that I have on my channel featuring art and silliness and happiness, um, hit that subscribe button and also hit that cowbell and tell them that you want to receive notifications so you can see my videos because that would be awesome. But I hope you guys have an amazing day, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Goodbye.